Today we're going to be talking about some of the hardest workers in the U.S. economy, bees. So I'm going to hand it off to our resident beekeeper, actually, Kevin. I'm not kidding, he's actually a beekeeper. Uh, but you social insects are uh, insects that uh, live in communities and kind of specialized tasks. Um, so the typical colony is actually comprised of three <coughs> main units, the queen, the workers, and the drones. The you social order, so you've got a whole bunch of worker bees crowded around the queen, and they're pretty much there to give her her every need. We can definitely just see a distinct circle around the queen. Himalayan honeybees. So these honeybees are the largest bees in the world, and these hives can get up to five feet in diameter. And the average, which would probably be about 130, 540 pounds of honey, American uh, beekeeping hive would maybe yield 25 to 50 pounds. And this honey has hallucinogenic properties. The honey sells for four times the price. So colony collapse disorder is the main reason why bee populations have been declining. The bees will leave the hive and never come back. And some of the reasons are, one, global warming. So flowers are now blooming, like sooner or later than they used to in the past. Pesticide use is a big reason as well. Habitat loss, it's just less places for bees to uh, do these hives and reproduce and go out and pollinate. Bees are responsible for about 35% of global food production. And this has caused a uh, the world economy as a whole to lose about $5.7 billion a year from lower crop yields and higher production costs. So in the US, there's been about 10 million hives that have been lost, $200 per hive. Uh, in the United States, about 15 billion different crops as well are pollinated by bees. Apples, you name it, almost you can trace any food back to somewhere down the line bees were involved. The state that's been hit the hardest is actually California. Uh, the reason being is they have a two, three billion dollar uh, almond industry. So they have to import half of the United States uh, honeybees just into California uh, at certain times of the year for this to occur. So annual consumption is 450 million pounds of honey while we're only uh, producing 160 million pounds domestically. Now the median salary for any beekeeper is $70,000. All you need is a high school education. So it's actually a very profitable and very good career. So believe it or not, uh, there's actually an illegal trade with honey. <laughs> and it's mainly all focused around Chinese honey. And then because Chinese honey is illegal in the United States, it's actually been banned. But basically, China is the top supplier of the U.S. mainly because it's extremely cheap. They use inferior inputs. There's a high demand for it. The U.S. honey packers, they love it because it's so cheap and they'd rather buy it abroad than they would domestically. Now, this has become such a problem that the United States government actually started to subsidize the, uh, uh, the domestic firms that actually produce honey. It actually got so bad to the point where they actually uh, submitted tons of lawsuits against Chinese producers, uh, basically claiming that they were dumping their product in the United States. Why exactly is Chinese honey illegal? It's illegal because uh, they have antibiotics in it that are not approved by the FDA for human consumption. And ever since then, it's been illegal. But the demand hasn't gone away. So the honey packers still want this because it's extremely cheap. And the easiest way to do it is ghost labor. <clears throat> so basically what that is, you ship it to a country like India, and all they do is they buy it off China, and they slap their label on it. You don't even have to even have a single bee. Honey, honey bee colony death rates almost double what it should be. The National Pollinator Health Strategy to restore honeybee colony levels, sustainable levels, uh, restore and enhance up to 7 million acres of land for pollinators. Um, so it's going to cost about $50 million a year. It's kind of seen as like a canary in the coal mine. Does that serve as some kind of indicator for uh, possible uh, harms to the ecosystem later on? One quote that I have is that the science is clear, the species is headed toward extinction, and soon. There is no legitimate reason to delay federal protections for bees. Freezing protections for without public notice and comment flies in the face of the democratic process. If we don't have any bees left because they're dying at such high rates, I looked kind of into the future of bees, the very cleverly named Plan B, and then the Robo Bee. So the Plan B was developed by a college student, and essentially it was kind of like used as a resource for an educational tool to teach people about pollinators, why they're important, how they act. Um, but the robo <coughs> is actually really incredible. It's an amazing piece of technology, and its functions can be broken down into three parts. Its body, its brain, and its colony. Half the size of a paperclip, it weighs about a tenth of a gram, and it's totally autonomous. So it has sensors that acts as like the eyes and antennas, just like a bee would, so it can react uh, according to its environment. They're getting them to work together and um, coordinate so they act as a colony, so they're more efficient as a group.